Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about the Blade Saver Thread Cutter Gradients Parfait Fabrics Project Sweetwater. I'll be demonstrating how to join scraps of foam interfacing and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording later on in your week. So just a friendly reminder before I get started, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So I see Laura's watching from Cleveland, Courtney's watching from Texas, and Barb's watching from Minnesota. So welcome everyone. So this week's notion of the week was actually from an email sent to me by Molly. Molly suggested this blade saver thread cutter. So uh, Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera and I'll show you what it looks like. So um, it comes in a package just like this with some full color step-by-step -step instructions how to use it. This is the case portion and inside the case is sort of a flower shaped piece of plastic. And um, basically the gist of this tool is you can use your old rotary cutter blades rather than just discarding them after they're a little bit too dull to use in your rotary cutter you just place one inside so it does not come with the the blade in it this is one of my older blades that i took out of my cutter and the nice thing is there's really no way for you to get your fingers cut uh, the flower shaped uh, plastic petals sort of protect from that so um, storage is in the case for instance if you're traveling to um, a sewing class or a retreat, you can put it in the case and there's magnets to hold the lid in place. And then it also functions as a holder for um, the device. So you just slide it in there. And um, like I said, the blade is showing on all angles and you can also rotate the blade. So if it starts getting dull on the top, you can rotate it uh, to use up the whole entire blade, which is really super cost effective for your uh, rotary cutter blade. So what you would do with this is, uh, for instance, if you're chain piecing blocks and you have them all stitched together like this, let me move this out of the way, all you need to do is bring it down on the center where the blade is and it'll easily cut it. And let me see if I can kind of hold it sideways so that you can see from this angle as well. So you'll just bring it down over the blade and it'll just cut uh, the threads and then you can press your blocks open and continue on. So. Um, I wanted to quickly demonstrate uh, because it's really easy to get the blade in there also. So when it comes in the packaging, all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver um, to unscrew this screw right here. And you'll also do this if you need to rotate or replace your blades. And this portion just comes out and you can just go ahead and carefully pull that blade out and replace it if you need to. So um, again, this is the Blade Saver Thread Cutter. and there's a link in the description. It comes in tons of fun colors um, in case you'd like to be matchy-matchy with some of your other supplies, maybe your uh, seam ripper or your rotary cutter. And uh, I think it's a really fun, nice tool to keep by your sewing machine. All right, so I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments, um, what thread do you use for bag making? So I get emails all the time and I notice questions on the live show as well. Um, what people are using as far as threads go for bag making. Let me know your preference in the comments. I feel like there's no right or wrong when it comes to the threads necessarily, but um, there seems to be a whole array of different threads people are using for bag making. So let me know um, in the comments. Um, Sarah wanted to know, is that a Crafty Gemini t-shirt? It is. Um, I, I was actually um, wearing this to share with you on the show. Um, I love it because it says fabric plus thread equals magic. Um, it is available on uh, my friend Vanessa's website, which is uh, her, her brand is The Crafty Gemini. I've linked to where you can purchase the t-shirt in the comments. And I like it because it's not, um, 
years ago I used to like really form-fitting t-shirts but now I just like more relaxed t-shirts and this is one of those so um, I really like it uh, love the color because it matches with everything and of course um, I can't pass up a chance to add some more um, sewing themed t-shirts because I'm, I'm wearing jeans and t-shirts a majority of the time so um, I have another question for you what's your favorite thing about sewing perhaps um, how sewing makes you feel um, or just particular things you like about it things you like sewing let me know in the comments I think for me sewing sort of transports me and it almost makes time stand still so when I'm working on a project it seems like time goes like that in a flash so I think that's one of my favorite things about sewing and also um, testing myself my mind putting my mind to work I really like that aspect of sewing as well whether you're following instructions or um, as I do sometimes writing a pattern I think most aspects of sewing require some thinking even if you're following along in a video it requires some thinking in order to process what's going on, um, especially the three-dimensional projects such as bags. So new fabric that I've added to my stash is from a fabric line called Gradient Parfait from Moda. And Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera. I didn't pick up every single print from the line, but I did pick up a majority of them so I can share them with you here. So um, lots of uh, rainbow colors. I really like... Um, Honestly, I, I like all of the fabrics that I picked out. Um, as you can see in the background, there's some butterflies. Um, I think I saw some birds. There's some birds in some of the other portions of the print. I really love, I, I super love this, and I love that there's other designs sort of transposed over this as well. And here's another colorway of that first fabric that I shared. This one's just the warm colors. This one has to be my favorite from the whole line. I just like the watercolor effect. Um, I'm not sure what I'll use for this, but I could see it working with a variety of projects like a big bag and also smaller projects like pouches or wallets. Here's another one in the same print that I shared before. And then here's the, the watercolor dots in um, the cool colors and the warm colors. And then finally one more. I think this is a really pretty combination of the colors in this particular print. So um, again, um, I've linked to this fabric line in the description. It's called Gradient Parfait. Um, recently came out and um, can't wait to use these. I, I, really, I really love um, the selection of the prints and something different that I have in my stash already. So uh, I wanted to share something that um, the Lawson family has been doing lately I find making meals generally a frustrating experience. Um, the chorus of, oh, what are we having for dinner? Uh, I feel the responsibility on my shoulders and I also feel it for me personally making dinners is challenging because I don't eat meat and the rest of my family does. And so it's hard making meals that everyone finds tasty but then fulfill both of those needs so uh, generally really frustrating and we've been eating out a lot lately so we decided to try something so um, on Sundays which is today um, everyone proposes um, a suggestion for a meal that they would like to make or um, generally that that I can make or we work together on it um, so everyone chooses a meal uh, we do the grocery shopping for the supplies needed on Sunday and then during the week um, everyone gets a chance to try out their meal. So it can either be something simple, like Danny's been choosing spaghetti lately. Um, I've been going with some past favorites in my recipe book, and Violet's been going online and choosing brand new recipes. So we've had a combination of old favorites and brand new recipes, and it's really fun because now I don't feel the full responsibility because everyone's chosen a recipe. Um, I've thought they all tasted good so far. Um, and I, I admitted that I'd be willing to make some meat-filled recipes as long as I could have the meat sort of on the side in addition to the rest of the meal that I'm making. So we're trying that out so far so good. Um, just trying to eat a little bit healthier, I guess. Um, yeah, so we've been doing that for, this will be the third week now, I think, and uh, so far it's been a success. But 
um, knock on wood, it can continue. And um, I, I love trying out new things as far as food. So I think this is heading us in the right direction as far as that goes. So um, Danny's favorite part of the show, when he's not on it, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. Um, Danny and I are both really, really grateful that you've tuned into the show and we really, really appreciate you watching. So thank you so much. All right, um, in lieu of the book review for this week, because I admit I had to stock up on some books, um, I really had none left to review on the show, but I went online earlier this morning and I found, I think about a dozen sewing and craft related books that I can review on future shows. So I should be set for at least a little while, but in the meantime, I wanted to share these um, kits from Project Sweetwater that my friend Vanessa recently got me. So Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera. It's a subscription, kind of like the quilt labels that I shared on the show in the past. And so um, every month I've been getting um, kits to make projects. So the first month that I got um, a shipment from Project Sweetwater, I got um, this Charm, Scare Charm Square Pack um, designed by Sweetwater and a project kit to make um, a bag and a pillow. And I really love the, uh, you get the printed fabrics as part of the kit. So I thought that was super fun. And then last month for Valentine's Day for Project Sweetwater, I got, let me see if I can hold this up so they're not so shiny, um, a quilt panel, which you can use as either a whole cloth quilt or uh, backing to a quilt with hearts all over it. So that's the fabric that's in this package over here. And then, charm squares with hearts on them as well as uh, a project to make this little um, mini quilt. So I thought it was a really clever idea. I like the idea of having special fabrics designed for specific projects such as uh, these two right here with the pillow in the bag. Um, I really love panels and especially the pillow really caught my eye. So um, if you're interested in checking that out or if you're interested in checking out uh, the quilt labels. Um, I don't have those to show you on set, but I have talked about them on the past. I've linked to Project Sweetwater in the comments and you can check that out after the show and find out more information there. So my demonstration for tonight, let me get everything shifted over. Um, I've seen some questions recently about how to economize your interfacing, specifically foam interfacing. And um, I think we all certainly have odds and ends or scraps of foam interfacing and um, there's a couple of items that you can use to join your pieces um, together. So Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera and I prepared this before the show just so you can see what the end result will be. So I tried out two different products for basically seam tape. So joining two, two bits of foam interfacing, I press one on either side and I'll show you in this demonstration how to join the pieces. So as you can see, I've got two pieces of foam interfacing and they're just oddball scraps. And so before I get started, I'm going to cut uh, a straight edge so that I can butt up the two pieces up against each other. So they won't be overlapping or on top of each other. They're just going to be butted up. So I'm going to take my ruler and my rotary cutter and just cut cut off the jagged edge. Actually, I'm gonna move that a little bit further down. Cut off the jagged edge to create a straight line. So to join your pieces, you can either use a zigzag stitch, a tight zigzag stitch, and zigzag directly down the cut line. But I'm going to show you these two products during this demonstration. So, I'm going to be using, this one's from Pelon. It's called Easy Knit Tape, Batting and Seam Tape. It's one and a half inches wide and it's a knit tape. And then the second product I have here is from Marty Mitchell, Marty's Choice Fusible Tape. So it comes in different widths. I have the one inch wide. Uh, I also noticed it comes in two inch wide and it is a non-woven interfacing. It reminds me this particular product uh, feels very similar to Pelon um, PLF36, which is also um, a non-woven interfacing by the yard. Obviously, this is a strip. So I'm going to show you how to apply both of these. And I suggest using a pressing cloth, especially for that um, Marty Mitchell product. 
um, it can possibly stick to your um, iron. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a strip of the Pellon batting and seam tape. I've got my iron set at the cotton setting. And let me just move my cutting board out of the way. Okay, so again, you wanna make sure that the two foam pieces are butted up as tight as you can against each other. And I'm just going to lay this Pellon tape approximately on the center. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna lay my pressing cloth directly on top to pre protect my iron. And then I'm going to go ahead and press it. And I'm going to flip it over to the other side. So I would suggest if you're doing this to, oh, look what I did. Uh, I went ahead and placed the, <laughs> you wanna make sure the adhesive side, which is the bumpy side is against your interfacing. Definitely not the first time I've done that. All right, so yeah, that's, that's why you wanna use a pressing cloth here. <laughs> Okay, so if you're, if you're using just a single product, I highly recommend applying it to both sides just so your sort of Franken foam has um, more stability. So it has less chance of sort of bending and you being able to see the seam in the finished uh, bag. Okay, so there's the Pellon product on one side and on the other side I'm going to apply that Marty Mitchell tape, again, you wanna make sure the bumpy side is against uh, the foam interfacing. So they're both really easy to apply. My impressions after applying the both is, I felt that they were very close as far as um, how good of a job I thought that they covered the seam. If I was pressed to pick one, which one I cared for better, um, because this is only because the Marty's fusible tape is a bit thinner. I kind of liked the slight more thickness of the Pellon product a little bit more, and I'm not sure if it's also because it's a knit product. Um, like I said, they're both extremely close, but if I'm hard pressed to choose one, I think I like the, the Pellon batting and seam tape a little bit better. And like I mentioned, um, you might want to consider applying whichever one you're using to both sides just to further stabilize this. And um, you might want to also consider an extra step. Um, normally I'm just using my fabric and placing it directly on top of the foam when I'm stitching it in place. Um, but you might want to consider attaching Shape Flex to the fabric first and then attaching it to the foam lessening your chances of seeing any kind of um, sort of break where you've attached the two pieces. I, I don't think it will be a problem, especially with um, the Pellon knit tape, but um, if you wanna take an extra step and go a little bit further, that might be an option. And I also wanted to mention, this will only work on the foam interfacing without the adhesive. So some foam interfacings are single-sided fusible some are double-sided fusible. Obviously, you won't want to use um, this technique on a fusible foam because then you'll either be fusing to your pressing cloth or to your ironing mat. So this is the Biani Soft and Stable, which is a sew-in foam, and that's why um, this knit tape works for that. So if you are using a fusible foam, you might want to instead use the zigzag stitch to um, attach your two pieces of foam interfacing instead um, and um, I think this is a really great way to economize and use up every little bit of your foam interfacing and this will especially work really well for smaller projects like pouches where you won't need to have um, a very big piece. You can use up all the itty bittiest pieces of your foam interfacing. Um, I have sort of an add-on question uh, before we get over to the live questions, but are you currently storing and using up your little scraps of foam interfacing? Do you have maybe a bin in your storage room where you keep the scraps of interfacing? And if you do, are you currently joining your pieces of foam or do you just save it for small pieces that you have to cut out or really small projects? So let me know in the comments and I'm curious to see. All right, um, in a, just a minute, I'm going to be answering some questions live. So if you have a question for me, go ahead and type it in the comments right now. 
on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching our show. Um, I will, Danny will be placing some up on the screen for me in just a minute. But before we get over to that, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway, and that is uh, Barbara Chisella. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Congratulations to Barbara. Please email me after the show so that I can get you set up with your prize. And my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Danny's going to drop that on the screen. Uh, so please email me after the show. And additionally, you can always email me anytime if you have a question about one of my patterns or a specific bag making related question. Feel free to email me anytime. So um, Danny's going to put some questions up on the screen. Um, Diane says, Danny, is it just my screen or is the question line under Sarah in smaller print? Um, Actually, um, if there's a larger comment, it'll automatically size the text to fit in the box. So if it's it's larger, it's going to make the text smaller. If it's smaller comment, it'll be larger. Okay. Is that you talking into your new mic? Yes. Okay. Danny got a new mic, uh, a podcast mic. And at first I was like, Danny... Why do we need a podcast, Mike? I, I hope you're not expecting me to start a podcast, but that was a really great idea. So Danny can answer questions uh, during the show too when he's off camera. Brenda says, any suggestions for a good book for teaching kiddos to sew? Oh, I'm trying to recall the name. I think the name of the book is Sewing School from Lucky Spool is the publisher. I reviewed it on the show, but it's probably been years and years ago. Um, but it's a fantastic book uh, from what I can recall as far as setting up for basic supplies um, and basic st stitching for a beginner. Modern Quilt Studio also has a few books for teaching kids to sew. The names of those are escaping me, but um, again, that's from Modern Quilt Studio, I believe. Um, Jackie says, I want to say that I really loved Bag Lab of doing darts, really enjoyed watching it. Thank you so much, Jackie. I really appreciate it. Um, I feel like for me doing Bag Lab, which we have Bag Lab every other Sunday, so the Sundays where Danny's on the show, and it gives me a chance to talk about one of your questions more in depth. So I, ha I receive the questions ahead of time and um, I get a chance to prepare usually about a, a 10 minute or so explanation um, and demonstrate the technique. Like last Sunday, I demonstrated how to sew darts to get better looking darts and avoid fabric puckering up while you're trying to sew the dart for a bag. And um, it's really enjoyable to me, especially since we've been doing the live shows for six years. I've been doing demonstrations all this time. And you would think after six years, I would certainly have run out of ideas for demonstrations long ago, but I think Bag Lab has really invigorated things and put new um, ideas for demonstrations in the pipeline. So um, very exciting and we'll have Bag Lab um, again next Sunday. Sarah says, is there a benefit to using the tape versus the zigzag stitch? Um, I have to be completely honest, while the zigzag stitch will work really well, my main machine is a straight stitch only, so I don't, on my machine, I don't have the option for the straight stitch. Um, I do like the coverage that um, the seam tape gives. Um, I like the idea of things being held together and um, just thinking through things just now, if you want to go even a step further, uh, machine quilting your fabric to the foam before starting on your project will sort of make things airtight as far as having things held together. One note about if you're machine quilting your fabric to your interfacing, you want to make sure to rough cut your fabric and interfacing about one inch larger on all sides. And that will just give you a little bit of leverage um, for machine stitching to account for any shrinkage because oftentimes when you're machine stitching, um, everything sort of shrinks up a bit and you don't wanna end up with pieces that are too small for your project. So make sure to cut those bigger if you will be uh, machine quilting your fabric to your foam. Um, Jennifer says, can we use strips of SF 101 for the Franken foam? Yeah, you could use um, scraps of the Pellon Shape Flex um, cut into strips to uh, Franken foam your pieces as well. So there's a variety of products we'll use that you can use. Um, obviously the fusible products will be the easiest. Cynthia says, what iron do you use? So I use um, 
I have several irons because I've reviewed some over the years on this show. Um, this is the Singer Expert Finish Iron. I've had this iron since 2013 and it's never leaked. I got this iron because my original iron, which was a Rowenta, um, I think it was a week after the warranty expired, it started leaking. So for that particular iron, um, after that I was never able to keep water in it. I had to keep water separately, but as you can see probably on camera, there's currently a bunch of water in my iron right now. So works really great and uh, never had any trouble with it. Um, Teresa says, are there any recommendations for when to use the piece foam, smaller bags maybe? Yeah, I think the smaller the bag or project, um, the more camouflaged your um, Franken foam will be, um, especially on a larger project. Um, I guess I suppose there's a slight chance um, to see that uh, join line, but um, like I mentioned, using the the interfacing and especially either machine quilting or using an additional layer of shape flex um, against your fabric um, that will help a lot. But uh, certainly using a smaller project will be ideal for the Franken foam pieces. Um, Kim says cost difference between the seam tape. Um, I think the Pellon product was about. $11 and some change. Um, the Marty Mitchell tape, I can't recall off the top of my head. Possibly a dollar or two more, but um, I've linked to both of those in the description so you can check those out and the prices should also be shown there. Um, oh, I should also mention how much tape is included in the package. So the Pellon product, there's 30 yards in there and then same thing with the, the Marty's uh, fusible tape, also 30 yards. Prudence says, when making cork straps, is one uh, is one fold with raw edges strong enough? Not sure my machine would like more layers. It depends on the bags. I think, let's see. So for this particular bag, this is the Renegade bag, and this is a sample that I made, and the strap on this bag is just two layers. Um, I would consider the style of bag it is and the size of the bag. Like if it's a, a really large travel bag, I would be hesitant about the two layers. Um, perhaps three layers would be a little bit better. Um, actually, I was planning, it's funny that you mentioned that. My original demonstration for tonight was, I was thinking of talking about the different uh, thicknesses of straps, uh, four layers of fabric, three layers of fabric, two layers of fabric. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that in two weeks on the show, but um, yeah, it's definitely possible to use the amount of layers for a strap that your machine can accommodate. Um, Carrie says, is there a max number of pieces to put together into a single panel and maintain the structure? So I don't know that it necessarily matters. I don't. I don't know that I would use really tiny scraps like scraps like these and try to get them all together. Um, if you are do, doing something like that, if you're deciding to put the time in, perhaps machine quilting will, will be most beneficial if you have a ton of scraps that you're putting together with the interfacing. Laura says, what do you use for a pressing cloth? Um, while they do have pressing cloths that you can buy at the sport store specifically for that use, I. I had to make my own tonight because I, I'm not often personally using one, so I just cut a piece of uh, Kona white fabric for my pressing cloth, but I've used other things in the past, such as if you have an old bed sheet or some sort of bed linen um, that maybe had a hole in it, so you're not using it for your bed anymore, you can cut that up into pressing cloths. Um, so you don't necessarily need to purchase um, something new if you have scraps laying around of some sort. Linda says, I have used grow grain ribbon between the cork. Um, oh, that's a good idea. So Linda's talking about uh, for the two layers of the cork um, to sort of use it in between the layers, kind of to stabilize it. And that's a really great point, Linda. Thanks for mentioning that. That'll help strengthen the strap as well. I do have a free video on my YouTube channel and it's also on my website, how to get smooth straps. And I talk about different things you can put um, in between the layers of fabric, such as the grow grain ribbon, I think I also use twill tape. Um, so you can find that video, like I mentioned, on my YouTube channel. And there's a search box on the So Sweetness channel. 
you can just type in smooth straps and that should come up. Betsy says putting a strip of Decoville Light or Grow Green Ribbon inside a two-layer strap helps with strength of the strap. Thank you so much, Betsy. I didn't even think about the Decoville Light, but that would be really great for that as well. Angela says, do you have tips for back fatigue when sewing? Stretching. Yeah, good one. I Amy. would suggest stretching a back brace. I just know I have fatigue when I'm doing stuff standing up, and I know those um, help a ton. Crossing your legs and reach down and touch your toe as far as you can reach down helps a lot for me personally. Do you think also, I know a few weeks back we were talking about standing up while sewing. Danny, do you think um, fixing up your sewing space so that you're maximizing your good posture would be good help for that? Yeah, having good heights for if you're using a cutting table or a desk mm -hmm. you're working at, having it at the right height would definitely mm -hmm. be more beneficial so you're not leaning over Mm -hmm. bending and hurting your back out of position. Oh, I love that you can answer questions on the show when you're not on it. That's awesome. <laughs> Elaine says, Sarah, I've been folding all my fabrics just like you demonstrated. I think I all I have all of the large cuts of fabric pressed and folded. I just have the scraps now to organize. Thank you so much for helping me ditch the plastic tubs. That's awesome, Elaine. I'm so glad that's um, helping for you. Um, in case you missed it, I fold my fabric onto comic book boards and I personally use plastic alligator clips to keep the fabric held onto the board. I actually have, uh, let me see if I can grab it. I was cutting out some fabric earlier, so I have one of these said pieces of, here's my fabric folded onto the, it's actually on a comic book board. The board's in the middle and then um, I know the fabric is really light so you can't see the plastic alligator clips, but See if I can hold one up if the camera will pick it up. There we go. That's what the plastic alligator clip looks like. So I just put one on the top and one on the bottom and it just holds the fabric in place. Um, it generally works best with one or two yards of fabric or less. Um, if it gets to more yardage, um, I'll generally skip the alligator clip and just fold it on there because the alligator clips have a hard time holding um, really thick layers of fabric. Robin says, I use the Pellon tape to hem knits, iron on the wrong side and fold in half, stitch and done stabilizes it. That's a really great comment. And I think there was also some instruction inside the package of the Marty's fusible tape, um, how to use it for other uses, such as, I don't think she specifically mentioned hemming, but she used it for um, quilts and attaching binding as well. So um, great tips, thank you so much. Vanessa says, um, flow sack uh, towels are great for pressing cloths. I don't think I'm familiar with those, but thank you for, um, it's always nice to have additional things we can use for pressing cloths besides the store-bought pressing cloths. Um, a great book for ergonomics is So Healthy, So Happy. Lots of great information, including how to get good measurements for tables and chairs. Thank you so much for that uh, recommendation for that book. I'll have to check that out after the show try to find my pen <laughs> all right um wendy says what's the best first project to try faux leather for the first time uh for bag lab can you demo faux leather straps on a cotton bag uh yeah i'll write that down um we actually have i know it was specifically labeled for cork projects, but you can also use it for faux leather as well um, on my website. And uh, I think it should be on YouTube as well. Um, they're free videos, six quick cork projects. There's a cork um, eyeglass case, a cork zipper pouch, a cork passport wallet, um, a cork tassel, a cork luggage, luggage sleeve, um, flower sack. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> Um, so check out those projects. You can also use those, even though they're labeled for cork, you can also use those for either leather or um, vinyl. Um, Cindy says, is there a Juki machine that can handle thickness but also has a zigzag stitch? Um, I'm sure there are. Um, I'm not super well versed on all the sewing machines out there, but there should be because I know there's several computerized Juki machines. If anyone has a Juki, perhaps computerized with a zigzag stitch, um, let us know in the comments and hopefully Danny can look out for it to post it on the screen for Cindy. 
Sue says, I bought a deck of cards and each one has a yoga position and I choose one and try it every half hour or so to keep moving really works. That's a really great idea. Um, taking breaks, moving around so you're not sort of glued in the same position such as at your sewing machine for a really long time. Great tips, thank you so much. Um, Janice says, Danny, could you ask Sarah if Domestic Series 125 sewing machine, um, it is a very old, will this machine, um, do you think these will go through full leather? Um, not familiar with that one off the top of my head. I'm sure there's someone watching who is. Again, let us know in the comments um, if you have any feedback on that particular machine. Laura says, not a question, but I just wanted to say how much I enjoy watching your show. I wait for it all week. Thank you so much. I we spend a lot of time on the show and on the technology for the show and uh, we really appreciate that uh, you're enjoying the the content especially the demonstrations deborah says hit the like button yes um if you could possibly whether you're watching on facebook or youtube hit the like button or the thumbs up i understand some of you are casting to a tv and that's not possible if you're watching it on the tv but um if you're on your device um, we really appreciate the thumbs up or the likes Alex says, totally off topic, but worth it because it's such a cute tangent. Any plans to take your pup to meet your horse? How are they both doing? Um, I don't, there's a couple dogs at the barn. So my horse is around dogs. One is my trainer's dog, uh, an Australian Shepherd. His name is Arrow. I love Arrow so much. Um, and sometimes in the mornings, first thing in the morning, because I ride early, he... Rather than running behind my horse, he runs in front. So he'll be running, Arrow will be running around the arena waiting for another horse to chase after him. And uh, while he's running, he kind of periodically turns around to see like how close the horse is. And he just runs laps. Sometimes he just runs laps around the arena all by himself. So I don't have plans to take my dog to the stable, but um, they're both doing great. Um, I'm looking forward to spring coming so we can finally go outside some more. Um, Mikey's doing really well. Mikey, that's the name of uh, our standard poodle. He's three and a half months old. Violet promised to bring him on set uh, tonight, so maybe she'll bring him on in a little bit if he's being good. <laughs> Dawn says, not a question, but I looked up my first post on Facebook and it was August 17th, 2018. The Baker Street bag and the Rockstar bag. 18. That's four years. Well, that's amazing. Thank you for sticking with us and watching the show for so many years, Don. Certainly a familiar face uh, in the comments for the show. So um, we really appreciate, oh, I, I hear Violet coming. So I'm gonna hold off on Teresa's question for just a second. Violet was anxious to bring Mikey on the, the set today. He needs a little haircut. You want to, I'm guessing Violet doesn't want to be on the show, right? <laughs> There he is. He's such a good boy. She's like her mother with the pajama pants. Yeah. I told her before the show, well, you know you're going to be on YouTube and Facebook. Did you want to change? And she was like, well, nobody's going to see me because Mikey will, will block my outfit from... <laughs> He's a good boy. He's getting a little tired though, right? He has to go to the bathroom. He has to go out? Okay. All right. Violet's going to take Mikey out. Thank you, Violet. <laughs> All right. I think Teresa's question was on the screen just a second ago. Um, Teresa says, would you consider doing a review of your Singer iron that is made today um, since sometimes the newer stuff isn't constructed as well? Um, I'm trying to think if I talked about my Singer iron. I feel like I have maybe. Um, maybe I could talk about it real quick uh, since I've got my wool mat over here. Danny, would you mind switching to the overhead? But I think she wants a current one made today. Oh, a different Singer? No, it says consider doing a review of a sing iron that is made today. Is that a, a relatively new sing iron, sir? Um, I mean, I got it in 2013. Well, that's what they're saying. Made it today, they're not in the same There's level. another version that's green I also have. It's at our wor workshop, though. So um, I'll try and see if I can get that back if you're interested in that one instead. Um, Wendy says, looking for good tips on cleaning the iron plate. I've tried several and none seem to get it as clean as Sarah's iron. I... You know, my first iron, it was always black and gunky with adhesive. I don't know if it's because I'm just getting lucky or getting better, but this one's stayed relatively clean. Uh, a few years ago, I did review several products to clean the plate of your iron. Um, I would recommend going on our YouTube channel, our Slow Sweetness channel, typing in the search box, clean iron, and um, hopefully that video should pop up. Um, like I said, I reviewed several different products products on it. 
um, as far as getting it clean. So um, check that out. If you can't find it, let me know. Uh, my email is sarah at soulsweetness.com. Thank you, Danny, for reading my mind. <laughs> Um, Marguerite says, uh, can you show the inside of that bag? Sure. Let's see. It's got one side, it's got a zipper pocket. Um, and the other side is just nothing. But if you would like to have a zipper pocket on both sides, you could Let's see, did I close the hole in my lining? Oh, I did. Sometimes when I finish a bag that'll be on the set, I, I don't close the hole in the lining, but on this particular bag, I did close the hole. It's a little bit wrinkly, but um, yeah. Um, Araceli says, is there a non-webbing interfacing that you recommend for interfacing pockets more economic than SF-101? Um, I pretty much just use SF-101. I'm sure there's other interfacings that are comparable that you could use instead. Um, I personally haven't used them, so I can't speak to them, but I'm sure there's other people that have. So if you have, let us know in the comments. Sheila says, is it okay to make an entire bag with cork fabric or is cork fabric only good as accents? That's a really great question. Uh, for cork fabric, I usually like to economize my cork and make it go a little bit further. So I'm generally pairing it with, as you've mentioned, either accents or straps. But I have seen a ton of cork bags and pouches and other projects made with all cork for the exterior. Um, it's certainly possible. I guess it just depends on um, if that's a look that you're interested in, but definitely doable. Um, I'm trying to think what would be the best way. If you go in our Soul Sweetness Facebook group, if you're on Facebook, if you type in either a cork bag or cork pouch, hopefully some will come up in the search that people have made in our group that are all cork. Um, I. I can't think of one so sweetness project that I haven't seen over the years that wasn't entirely made of either cork vinyl or leather, so definitely possible. Jackie says, Sarah, can you also do a demo on peekaboo straps? Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Um, feel free to either follow up in the comments or you can always email me after the show. Um, Anne says, what is that yellowish bag behind you? This is the Stingray bag, it comes in, um, this is the handbag size and it also comes in a tote bag size, so a, another version that's bigger. Um, Linda says, I find the back brace Sarah demonstrated quite a while back is wonderful. Yeah, I forgot the name of it, but it's a really interesting back brace because it has like a little pouch in the back that's weighted. I think it's sand in the back, so it kind of helps you by slightly pulling your shoulders back. I think I've over the years I've tried maybe three or four different back braces for posture, good posture. And they all, besides that one that was weighted, all of the other ones, which is the reason why I didn't like them, had Velcro straps that connected kind of like over your shoulder. And so they would dig into like the side of my arms and my armpit and the Velcro kind of chafed that area over there. So that's why I like the one that's weighted because it's just constructed a little bit differently. Um, Michelle says, I have the HZL DX5, same as the DX7, except fewer fancy stitches. Love it. Okay, so this was the question earlier about the Juki and the zigzag stitches. Um, Sarah says, I have a Juki DX2000 QVP and it has zigzag and can handle layers. I made the Aragon bag on it. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you both for the feedback on the Juki with the zigzag stitch option. Um, Linda says, sorry, can you repeat the name of the yellowish bag? Um, the Stingray bag. Okay, Danny's calling in on the question, so I apologize if I did not get to your question live. Um, let's see, one last thing to get to tonight is the giveaway for tonight. I'm, there we go. So our giveaways are randomly drawn, and you have until the end of the day this Saturday to enter, leave a comment on this show, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch. We compile all the comments together and I draw one winner. Winner, I'll announce the winner on next Sunday's show, and I have an extra bonus question for you that you can answer in the comments. Um, how many years old is your oldest sewing machine? And while Danny's putting that up on the screen, um, I'm going to show you the giveaway prize. It's five pieces of fabric from my stash and um, a $15 gift certificate to my shop. So let's see, I tried to choose things that 
weren't exactly matchy matchy. So this is from Anna Maria Horner. This is um, the next three fabrics are from Coca, which is a manufacturer a design. There we go. Design house in Japan. This one's canvas with strawberries. This one is canvas with a bunch of animal silhouettes. This one's really cute. It's got a bunch of um, French desserts. It's sort of a, a creamy pinkish background on this particular one. And this one's sort of like a, a splatter with different colors. Here's the back of it too. All right, so it'll be those fabrics plus a $15 gift certificate. Um, so good luck everyone in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in for Social Sunday. I'll be back next Sunday with Danny for Bag Lab. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody. Thank you.